around here, of course, we also have to control our, our atmosphere in here. The Skylab has only five pounds of pressure in it. Of course, on Earth, you're used to 14.7 pounds of pressure. We only have five here, but we've made it up in such a way that we have at least as much oxygen as we breathe on the Earth. Whereas your atmosphere on the Earth is 80% nitrogen and only 20% oxygen, ours is just the other way around up here. It's about 70 or 80% oxygen, depending on, on the variation of, of the, uh, the sensors, which are sensing it. And uh, it's only 20% nitrogen. Of course, the nitrogen reduces the flammability characteristics of the atmosphere greatly. But it is controlled from this panel right here. And these are the meters that tell us what the pressure is in the various areas of our spacecraft. This is the airlock compartment of our spacecraft. In a few moments, I'll tell you why it's called an airlock. But right here, you see a hatch. This is our extravehicular activity hatch. Periodically, we have to go outside and replace the film and the cameras in the solar telescopes. We put up a sail to uh, help protect the uh, workshop from the heat of the sun. And we also went out there and hooked up the rate gyro uh, package. But uh, we have three ABAs during our mission. We've already completed two. And this is the hatch that we use to go out there. We get our spacesuits on, hook ourselves up to our umbilicals, which are located in these boxes. And then we get in this airlock two men at a time with all of the uh, extra equipment and paraphernalia that we have to take out with us. But now you ask the question, what happens when you open this hatch? Doesn't all the air leak out? Well, the answer is partially yes and partially no, and that's why this is called an airlock. Because at the forward edge here, you see a big hatch. And behind me, there's another hatch, which is similar. These hatches can both be closed to shut off this little compartment right here from the rest of the spacecraft. When we do this, both ends of the spacecraft are isolated and the air can't leak out when we open this hatch. So what we do is we just simply open this valve, which allows all of the gas and atmosphere to escape from the small lock compartment, and it becomes a vacuum just like space with air on either side of it. Then we can open the hatch and go outside and do our work. When we come back in, it's just the reverse process. We close the hatch, close this valve, and then uh, the other man who's left inside the spacecraft can open one of the valves in the hatch from the pressurized side of the spacecraft and let the air in and replenish the supply, get it back up to five pounds so that then we can open the hatch and get our, get our spacesuits off. Now we'll proceed on further down to the uh, upper area of the orbital workshop where we uh, also spend a lot of time doing a lot of work. Well, here we are again, space fans. Uh, we're down in the uh, lower area of the workshop now. This is a converted hydrogen tank. This uh, itself was a rocket one day that uh, was used to uh, send men to the moon or the same type. This is the hydrogen tank. It's been converted into our working quarters. I'd like to uh, show you around here briefly as well. So uh, you'll notice that we get around quite readily in zero G. Uh, we've been here long enough now to the point where zero G seems as normal as uh, just walking down the street. We uh, just float anywhere. Imagine how uh, neat it would be to be able to float up to the uh, peak of your house to paint it or to whistle up into a tree to uh, retrieve your kite or something like that. Well, that's what we do here. We just want to show you these dome lockers. So go on up to them and uh, we uh, have a ring of dome lockers in the uh, workshop here in which we uh, store a lot of equipment and extra things that we need to use. We have to resupply the various things in the works out frequently and so uh, this is where we keep spare parts, extra clothes, extra towels, extra bags, disposal bags, uh, all kinds of extra equipment, extra film, extra tapes. Here's a whole load of towels in here. If they don't come out, I'll just show you what that looks like. So we keep a lot of extra towels right in there. So we have a whole ring of these dome lockers. And sometimes it's fun just to run around these dome lockers. We can get enough centrifugal, centrifugal force going so that we can stay touching the dome lockers and just run around them for a little exercise, a little fun. Down below the dome lockers, we have water tanks. These are our water tanks. All the water that we have on the Skylab was launched in the Skylab as you see it now. And each mission uses some of these water tanks. Some of it is used for the wardroom where we mix our food and drink it and other tanks are used for in the waste management compartment for cleaning and that kind of thing. The water in these tanks has iodine injected into it periodically to keep it pure. We have a way of testing this water, much like you test the water in a swimming pool. 
and by determining by looking at his color we can determine how much iodine is in it and then we have a way of adding some should we need to do so down over here is a locker where we keep our film of course in space our film would all become irradiated if we did not have a uh, good way to protect it so we have it in this heavy vault stored in drawers Whenever we want some film, we come in here and we get it. For example, we can pull it out right here. There's a film magazine for a motion picture camera. Oh, we have film down here for our Earth Resources cameras. These are all cassettes that are loaded into our Earth Resources cameras when we want to take pictures with those cameras. This whole vault is full of film, and it's protected by the heavy metal around it. Streaks in it are getting cloudy because of the radiation in space. As we move around this way, we come to an object that's hanging on the wall here, and what we call an airlock. This side of the spacecraft, we have a scientific airlock. Basically, what a scientific airlock is, is a, a hole in the spacecraft. What we do is we take an experiment, and seal it up to the scientific airlock so that our air won't leak out. And then there's a door in there that we can open up. And when we open this door, we can extend whatever is inside this experiment out. For example, in here is a mirror that we can point different directions to look at the stars and to take a lot of data and um, many very faint stars that we can't see with the naked eye. We have other experiments that we can put in there as well, which are all located on the floor right here. They all do different types of things and take different types of data. On the other side of the spacecraft, we also have a scientific airlock. This particular one looks at the sun. The one we were just at looks opposite from the sun. We have an experiment. We, we have a package installed in here, which is our parasol. Our parasol was extended through this container and out inside the spacecraft and extend it over the spacecraft to, to make up for the meteoroid shield which was taken off during launch. That parasol has kept us cool all this time. As we move around in this way, we have some food storage lockers. Here's extra food. Each one of these packages contains six days worth of food for three men. It all comes in these cans. Our menu repeats itself every six days. So every sixth day we come up here, take our food down to the boardroom, and restock our pantry. It all comes in cans, big ones and little ones. Inside the cans are plastic containers, in which we can put water, rehydrate our food. We also have some frozen food. Our frozen food is stored in these refrigerators right over here, or these freezers. Much as you'd store your frozen food at home. Now we don't have as much frozen food as we do regular food. One of these packages will last three men for 28 days. We have about one frozen food item per day. That includes steak, ice cream, roast beef. It's very good food. Uh, located on the crew quarters deck. This is where we do most of our living and eating and some of our experimental work. Off to my left here, you can see the control panel for this part of the Skylab. This is where we control our electrical power and refrigeration system. For example, over here is our thermal control, our thermostat for controlling the temperature of the as well as all this over here. This also controls our thermal control system, circuit breakers for our habitability uh, support system. For example, these are the uh, circuit breakers for our water tanks. Here are the circuit breakers that co control the electrical power to our food trays. We move around here, we have uh, some more circuit breakers that uh, just like those you have in your home for controlling the electrical power to all of our accessory outlets, much as you would control Electric electricity to the plugs in your walls.